Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here, and today I want to help you travel smarter. If you make travel videos, if you're a travel vlogger, to show you one thing you can do to shorten your rendering times in Final Cut Pro, one thing in your work order flow that's going to be a huge difference that'll shorten the rendering times, which means less time you spend waiting to render a video and more time you can spend on actually editing it and getting it uploaded to YouTube. Now this tip comes out of the end of my last video, which was about editing in Final Cut Pro using a LUTs. But I ended up talking a lot more about audio editing and video editing and a workflow there that's going to help you shorten your rendering times. So instead of putting it in that video, I decided to put more of an extended cut in this video. So this is the trick. This is the kind of workflow outline, the tip you can use to shorten your rendering times. And a couple of bonus tips that I have while editing. First of all, if you're going to be editing using LUTs and adjustment layers and color profiles, then I would recommend that you start with editing your audio first compressing, noise removal, anything like that. You want to do that first and then add your video edits on top of that. And the reason is because I've noticed that using audio settings first and then adding color corrections later tends to be less work for Final Cut. So when I add the audio edits, I usually add them to one clip. So I'll add those to a clip in the beginning and then I won't add the audio edits to the rest of the clips until the very end. So once I know that one clip is sounding pretty good, assuming that for example, it's a roll and I'm just talking like I'm talking to you now and I'm not shooting in different locations. If I were shooting this, for example, outdoors or in another room, I would adjust the audio for each of those clips. So one audio edit clip for every location. Once that's done, then I don't mess with the audio edits until the very end. Then what I'll do is I'll start working with the video edits. I'll start working, like I mentioned, with the exposure and then the color corrections and the LUTs. I'll add those in the various adjustment layers. And then once I'm satisfied with how everything looks, I'll extend those adjustment layers across all my clips. And then I'll take those audio edits and I'll copy and paste them to all the other clips. I usually combine all the rest of the remaining clips into one single clip. So I've got my audio edited clip here, and then I'll cut all those other clips, make them into one actual big clip so that I can just easily copy and paste. And again, it's less processing for my laptop, which means less time rendering. And when I'm actually editing the video, it's a little bit less sluggish and makes it easier and saves me time during the editing process. And if you're looking for sound editing tips, I highly recommend Alex Knickerbocker's YouTube channel. He's got a great set of different tutorials on audio editing. He works in Hollywood. He's done things like, well, Mr. Robot and so on. So he's got a great pedigree and he's got great advice on audio editing. I will also link to his channel down below if you want to check it out, if you want some more tips for audio editing. So I hope that quick little tip is useful for you. So basically the workflow is this. First, you want to edit your audio edits in one clip in the beginning, usually in the beginning of your video. You want to use that kind of as your test case. So you're going to edit the audio in that clip. And then once you get your audio set in that clip and you're happy with how it sounds, then you're going to start adding your video edits in your adjustment layers. Once you get your adjustment layers set, you got all that figured out. You're going to extend those adjustment layers across all of your clips, across all the clips that you want edited in that particular format. Now you've got your video set up. You've got your color correction. You've got your exposure correction. You've got all that in place. Then what you're going to do with that audio edited clip in the beginning, you're going to take all your other clips, make them one compound clip, and then you're going to go back to the original clip copy, then paste the effects, not the attributes, but paste the effects from that first clip into that new compound clip, which is basically the audio for the rest of your video, assuming those are all from the same audio clip. Now, if you're shooting indoors a little bit and then outdoors a little bit, you want to edit those clips a little bit differently, but the same general principle applies. Once you get all of that in place, now your video is edited and ready to be uploaded to YouTube. But first, you've got a render and hopefully this shortens that rendering time for you. It also shortens the amount of rendering on the fly time, which means that if you've got a laptop that's a little bit sluggish, so if you're using a MacBook Pro that's maybe not the newest one, then this is going to help a little bit with that on the fly rendering. So it's not kind of lagging and kind of doing <laughs> stuttering and just being annoying to work with. This is going to help you a little bit on that. And last thing, you just want to remember that you want to make all your edits at the end of the process and not during the process, generally speaking. And what that means is you want to get your A roll ready, your B roll ready. You want to get kind of how it's going to look. You want to get the content down and then make your edits on top of that, especially if you're worried about rendering times. If your machine is sluggish, you want to do all the editing last when you get all your content there so you can easily rearrange your content if you want, if you want to move a clip around 
or cut it or something like that. You don't have to worry about it lagging. Then add all your audio and video edits on top of that after. So hopefully this helps you save a little bit more time making YouTube videos or just rendering videos when you're editing. Let me know if you have any of your own tips down in the comments below. I'll be interested to read those. And while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. So instead of putting it in that video, I decided to put 